the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. Let's read the first five verses. If you have that, say amen. amen. Come on and read aloud with me. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. I want to stop at this point, and I certainly want you to refer back to verse 3 to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Uh, at the 6 a.m. worship, we spoke to you about the resurrection. At 9 o'clock, we spoke about uh, Paul preached the resurrection. Now I want to talk to you about after the resurrection. After the resurrection. It is certainly true that in John chapter 19 and verse 30, Jesus said, it is finished. He was hanging upon the cross and this was one of the seven last sayings of our Lord. So he really did not need to stay around after the resurrection to complete the plan of salvation. The plan of salvation was completed as Jesus hung upon the cross and of course he was able to take a panoramic glance and a retrospective view of all of the prophecies that had been written concerning him prophecies concerning his birth, prophecies concerning even where uh, he would operate as far as the headquarters of his ministry. Prophecy had determined that he would be born in Bethlehem of Judea. Prophecy had determined that he would have to go down into Egypt, that it might be fulfilled out of Egypt have I called my son. But also Isaiah wrote something concerning uh, the land of uh, Zebulun and Naphtali and that would be the way of the coast and this would be where his headquarters would be established. So Jesus established his headquarters in Capernaum that was in the area that Isaiah had talked about. Everything that he did during his uh, time here upon this earth he was always conscious of what the prophets had said about him. So consequently, as he is hanging upon the cross and all of the prophecies had been fulfilled, Isaiah had determined that a highway shall be there and a way and it shall be called the way of holiness. And the word way, a highway, is a connecting link. So as he hung between the heavens and the earth, one hand symbolically stretched forth God, toward God, and the other hand symbolically stretched toward man. He declares that I am the way, I am the connecting link. And when Isaiah said the highway would be there, every part of it had been put in place except for the connecting link. And now I am here, I am the way. So Isaiah's highway is complete. Everything that has been spoken of me is complete except there's one passage that said I would be given vinegar to drink. So when he saw that had not been fulfilled, he said, I thirst. And they gave him a sponge filled with vinegar. And after taking the sponge filled with vinegar, he recognized every prophecy now has been accomplished. And thus he said, it is finished. 
all of the prophecies. But he stayed around here after he got up out of the grave in order that many questions would not be hanging around. They had said that when Jesus arose from the grave and the soldiers that were eyewitnesses of the resurrection, eyewitnesses of the angel that came and rolled back the stone, and when the soldiers went back to report to their superiors, they said, don't tell this, don't let anybody hear this, but we'll give you some money to tell a lie. Say that he did not arise, but you fellas went to sleep. Now we know that there's a penalty for going to sleep on the job, but uh, you can tell that lie and we'll cover for you and we'll make sure that no harm comes to you. So they went on and tried to tell people that his disciples had stolen him away. But Jesus decided I'm going to stay here for about 40 days and appear to different ones here and there so they'll know that my body was not stolen but that in reality I really did arise. Now he appeared to his disciples on miscellaneous occasions. It was really about 11 times all total that he appeared. There are five or six that are outstanding. He appeared to Mary Magdalene in John 20 and 15 and she thought he was the gardener. He appeared to the 10 disciples. I say 10 because Judas has already hung himself. And in this particular setting, Thomas, who is called Didymus, was not present. So in John 20, verses 19 through 24, he appeared in that upper room to 10 disciples. Eight days later, in John 20 and 26, he appeared to the 11, because on this occasion, Thomas was present. Then he appeared to two disciples on the Emmaus Road, Luke 24, verse 13. He appeared to the disciples on the bank of the sea, where they had returned going back fishing, and that was in the 21st chapter of John. Matthew 28 and Mark 16 records the Great Commission where he appeared to his disciples and told them to go into all the world. And one of them said he commanded them to teach all nations. And another, he said, preach the gospel to every creature. But it is both giving an account of the same appearance. Finally, here that we have just read in the first chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. Here, it does not tell us the exact meaning but being assembled together with them. He commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Now that is significant in that 11 of the men whom Jesus chose were Galileans. Judas was the only Judean. The other 11 were Galileans. Judas was the only one who was a Judean. And Jerusalem was uh, located in Judea. Now remember Palestine, that the towns and cities in that province called Galilee, it lay to the northern part of Palestine. And then uh, between Galilee and Judea was Samaria. And down at the south was Judea. So Jesus, well I hope I'm not going too fast for you all. Jesus knew that these men were really Galileans. Well, why were they in Judea, in Jerusalem of Judea? Because God had already determined three times a year all of the males in Israel had to appear before the Lord in the holy city of Jerusalem. So they had come from Galilee into Judea because it was feast time. It was the feast of Passover. And Jesus, who is our Passover lamb, he couldn't die at any other season other than the season of Passover. So the Passover lamb, he had given his life. He had gone into the grave. He had gotten up that third day morning. So the business of those men of Israel was really finished in Jerusalem. It was time for them to go back home to Galilee. But Jesus said, I don't want you to leave Judea. Don't leave Jerusalem. There's something else I want you to have. Before I went to the cross, you had me. 
Whenever you got in trouble, Jesus would let them know that Peter, when your taxes were due, you had me. I told you to go and catch a fish and look in his mouth. And it was enough money there to pay your taxes. Peter, when your mother was sick, your mother-in-law, when she was sick, I went to your house and touched her and healed her from a fever. When you were hungry in the wilderness, I was able to take two fish and five loaves of bread and feed the hungry multitude of 5,000 men, not counting the women of the children. Whenever you got in trouble, you had me. But I want you to know now my work on earth is done and I've got to go back into the throne room. Now I don't want you to go back to Galilee by yourself. I told you the other night in the upper room that I would pray the Father and he would give you another comforter. I've been your comforter. I've been your companion. I've been the one that you look to for everything. But now that I'm going away, I've been with you. But I want you to have the power of God in you. Oh, hallelujah. Where everywhere you go, you won't be able to go anywhere without being accompanied by the power and the presence of God. And you will receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you know the thing that I notice here, Jesus said, when you get the Holy Ghost, you're going to be witnesses unto me in all Judea, in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and unto the utmost part of the world. And Jesus specifically stated that the Holy Ghost would give them power to be witnesses. Witnesses of Jesus Christ, yes. But witnesses of what particular instance in his life? Witness of the resurrection. And do you not know that most Christians, most Pentecostal Christians, we don't even know yet the real meaning for which we have the Holy Ghost? Jesus did say these signs shall follow them that believe. And one of the signs was they will speak with new tongues. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came, they spoke with other tongues. And we of Pentecostal persuasion in the Church of God in Christ and other Pentecostal organizations, we believe that the believer, once he receives the Holy Ghost, that he speaks with tongues as an initial evidence. But the Holy Ghost does not come to make you speak with tongues. And you folks that think that because you're talking in tongues, that's all the Holy Ghost is for, I'm sorry for you. He will speak through you, but that's not why he came. Jesus sent the Holy Ghost to the disciples in order that they could be effective witnesses of the resurrection. You think about it. What makes Christianity different? from other religions. There are a lot of religions that will teach you don't steal, don't commit adultery, don't murder, don't lie. Hello somebody. If you think Christianity is the only religion that teaches you to live a good moral life, you're wrong. There are a lot of religions that will teach you to live a good moral life. But even though they teach you to live a moral life, they don't give you the power. Hallelujah. The first chapter of John says of Jesus, he came to his own. His own received him not, but as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even them that believed on his name. Christianity not only teaches you how to live, but when you receive Christ, he becomes the power of the force within you that enables you to live according to his word. Oh, hallelujah. And then the other outstanding point about Christianity is after you shall have lived the Christian life on this earth. Other religions, once you go down into the grave, that's it. Their philosophy, no matter how it is phrased, it simply means when you're dead, you're done. But Christianity says that when life goes out of this body, it's not the end. Jesus alone gives you the hope of everlasting life 
through the power of the resurrection. And you people that's trying to live and get all you can and can all you get because you think all that I'm going to get, my heaven and my hell, all of it is right here, I'm sorry for you because this is not where it ends. The hope of the Christian is that just like Jesus mastered death, came out of that tomb, declaring all power in heaven and in earth is in my hand. And because I live, you shall live also. The same resurrection power that was in him, if you are saved, you have it living in you. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Everlasting life is not something that you will get in the grave, but it's something that you've got right now. If you are saved, you have everlasting life right now. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Praise God. So Jesus led them out as far as under Bethany. Are you still with me in Acts chapter 1? And I'm almost finished. When they therefore will come together, I'm looking at verse 6. They ask of him saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? These men of Israel were concerned with the kingdom, the kingdom. Lord, the Jerusalem has been trodden under the feet of Gentiles. We are now under Roman occupation. Before the Romans got here, there was Alexander the Great and the Grecian Empire. Before Alexander the Great, there was the Media Persian Kingdom. Before the Media Persian Kingdom came, there was the Babylonian Empire. Lord, we want to go back to the days, the great days when King David sat upon the throne, when we were a kingdom, when men and women came from far and near to see the holy city, to see the city of the great king. So we want to know, Master, now that you've gone to the cross, now that you have gone into the grave, now that you've come out with all power in your hand, will you at this time restore the kingdom unto Israel? But I hear Jesus saying, it is not for you to know. The times are the seasons that the Father hath put in his own power but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And when you get the Holy Ghost, you are going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the world. And all I want you to do is when you go and tell men the gospel of Jesus Christ, let them know that your Lord and Savior, that he's not somewhere dead on a Palestinian hillside, but let them know that I got up out of Joseph's new tomb and that all power in the heaven and the earth is in my hand. And I want you to tell it with authority. I want you to tell it with power. I want you to tell it with conviction. And some of us, we never have any power. We never have any conviction because some of us are just dull. Some of us are just uninteresting by nature. But when you wait before God until he fill you with the Holy Ghost, woo when you wait before God until the Holy Ghost becomes a burning in your spirit, when you start telling people about this thing, they've got to know that there's more to it than just your imagination. Don't you know that the reason churches have been full all day, people got up, some didn't even go to bed last night, made their way to sanctuaries and hilltop temples and made their way to outdoor services and everybody wanting to celebrate the fact that Jesus is alive and well. Somebody put out a lie that he's dead, but I heard the choir sing, and if God is dead, then tell me, how do I know that he's living in my heart? Tell me if God is dead, where did you lay his body? If God is dead, 
How is it that it came out and snatched defeat out of the jaws? Out of the jaws of defeat. He snatched victory out of the jaws of defeat. Life out of death. Victory over the grave. If he's dead, why didn't I get a telegram? Because I'm one of his children. Oh, he's not dead, but he's very much alive. And because he lives, I'm living today. I'm not certain been a memory. I'm not serving a dead Jew, but I serve a risen Savior. He's in this world today. I know that he is living. Whatever men may say, I feel his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And every time I need him, he's always near. He lives Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me. He talks with me along this narrow way. He lives. Salvation he imparts. You ask me how? I know he lives. He lives down in my heart. Hey, hey. Glory to God. When Jesus finished telling them to go back to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. All of a sudden he lifted his hands and began to bless them. And while he was blessing them, gravitation that could hold that other body down, the body that he had before he went in the grave. But when he went in the grave, something happened to that body. When the blood was drained out on Golgotha's ugly brow, and when they wrapped him up and put him in Joseph's new tomb, according to Peter, the body was reposed in sleep, but the spirit of my God went down in the spirit world, went back into the antediluvian period. Those that were alive before the flood of Noah's time, and he held a revival back there and preached to the spirits that were in prison. Hey, glory. And while the revival was going on, the clock kept on ticking. And in his spirit, he knew it was the third day. Well, fellas, I got to go. The devil tried to stop him. Demons tried to catch a hold to him, but the Bible said he rendered them helpless. He made a show of them openly, and he came out of the grave with all power in his hand. Yeah! And that body came out Easter morning in a glorified state. It was a body gravitation couldn't control. So while he was blessing his disciples out there at the city of Bethany, gravitation couldn't stop him. He caught the nearest cloud and started going up. And I see two angels, my God, standing by. And the disciples were looking up. And while they were looking up, the two angels touched him and said, Hey, you men of Galilee, why do you stand here gazing up in the heaven? The same Jesus that you see going up. The same Jesus that walked in Galilee. The same Jesus that taught beside the sea. The same Jesus that hung and bled on the cross. Same Jesus, he's coming back again. Ah, I want to be ready. Ah. Shia. When he come, ah, when he come, it's going to be like a thief and a robber by night. He that's holy, let him be holy still. He that's righteous, let him be righteous still. He that's filthy, let him be filthy still. Ah, when he come, when he come, I want to be caught up, caught up to meet him in the air. Yeah.
pressure, I'm going to quit. Hey, Lord. Woo-hoo. I'm glad that this is not the end of the story. You read in the storybooks and the heroes always keep the glory for themselves. But Jesus, if you let me paraphrase it, he'll tell you, I started out in heaven. I didn't have to go through all that. I didn't have to leave the hallelujahs of heaven. I didn't have to come down and look at how low he came. He left heaven. Somebody said if he'd stopped at the sun, it would have been a brighter world. If he'd stopped at the moon, it would have been a saner world. If he had stopped at Jupiter, it would have been a mightier world. If he'd stopped at Mercury, it would have been a faster moving world. By Saturn and the other planets, he was not seen. And Mars had no men which he could redeem. But I'm glad that I can say, to take my feet out of the miry clay, he came all, he came all the way down, down to poverty, down to being despised, down into the filth of this earth, down to mingle with filthy sinners, down to be talked about, scandalized and spat on, and he went down into the earth. And then when he got up out of the grave, he didn't do anything but go back to where he started. He didn't have to do that for himself, but he did it for you and me. He became sin that we could be righteous. He became poor that we could be rich. He died that we could live. You don't hear what I'm saying? And when it came up out of the grave, he had defeated our enemy. But I heard Paul say in 1 Corinthians 15 and 57, but thanks be unto God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He suffered it all for you. He suffered it all for me. Hey! He got up out the grave to let us know that death is not the end of your life. He got up out the grave to let you know a cold, dirty grave will not be your eternal home. And I don't know about you, but when I think about it, I get excited. Something in me want to say hallelujah. Something in me want to say glory. My seat want to run when nobody's after me. Tears start flowing when I don't have nothing to cry about. somebody thank God that his resurrection is not the end of the story
Praise the Lord. 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 Praise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise